हेलो आई एम अकांत यादव फाइनल ईयर स्टूडेंट ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग एट फैकल्टी ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ लखनऊ आई एम गोइंग टू गिव प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन कंस्ट्रक्शन टेक्निक्स ऑफ फ्लड रेजिस्टेंट बिल्डिंग अंडर द गाइडेंस ऑफ इंजीनियर जितिन प्रताप सिंह सर हियर इज अ लिस्ट ऑफ कंटेंट्स दैट आई एम गोइंग टू कवर इन द प्रेजेंटेशन कमिंग टू द इंट्रोडक्शन द फर्स्ट पार्ट इज अ फ्लड एंड इट कॉजेज फ्लड इज अ टेम्परेरी कंडीशन ऑफ पार्शियल और कंप्लीट सबमर्जेंस ऑफ लैंड दैट मे बी ड्यू टू हाई स्टॉम और ओवर फ्लोइंग स्ट्रीम दैट मे बी ऑल्सो ड्यू टू द ट्रॉपिकल साइक्लोन और हाई टाइट्स कमिंग टू द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ इट दैट इज अ फ्लड मिटिगेशन दिस इज अ टेक्निक ऑफ मैनेजमेंट एंड कंट्रोल ऑफ फ्लड वाटर मूवमेंट This can be done through frame or barriers by formation of leaves or embankment through meteorological data or by constructing flood resistant buildings. These pictures in the slide shows few of the mitigation techniques. The first is a filled container type. The second one is a frame type and the last one is a movable type. Now coming to the flood resistant building construction technique the first thing that why it is important this is important because it prevent damage to the property and provide safety to the lives the second thing that what are the factors to be think of before construction the first factor is a flood factor in this frequency of flood is considered the second one is structural factor and the third one is a financial consideration that must be previously think of now coming to the technique of the flood resistant building construction the first one is a dry flood proofing in this building is made water tight by sealing the openings adding sealant to walls and by providing pump to drain water that seeps inside this can be well seen in this picture this can be constructed by concrete or by masonry in this we can see that the seal for opening the back flow wall prevent sewer and drain breakup external coating all the things can be seen from this picture now coming to the second technique that is a elevation of structure in this lowest floor of building is located above flood level by elevating it lowest floor this can be seen in the two pictures that are in the slide the best that this picture shows the best the elevate all the activity which are not compatible with water above flood level the elevation of the lowest floor is above flood level and the flood level detected from previous meteorological data now coming to the third technique that is a wet flood proofing in this water is allowed to enter in the building or structure and openings are provided so that the water that had came with the flood can be discharged the material used in this technique is a flood resisting construction material this is a low cost technique but it must be noticed that post flood clean up is important in this technique this can be well seen through this picture that the there is a ground first floor door all the utilities are the stored above and openings are provided to enter water now coming to the fourth and the last technique that is a permanent barriers in this technique permanent barriers around the structure are constructed this can 
be a concrete or masonry or that can be also be a embankment or leaves constructed of compacted layer of soil which is impervious this is a most common that is used but in addition of all these it requires a significant amount of land as well as usable soil material to construct them this can be well seen through this picture in the picture we can see that the on right hand flood wall is reinforced and anchored with to withstand flood load and leaves are constructed on we can see it in left side and the backflow wall prevents sewer and drain backup all this can be seen from this slide now coming to the conclusion part that is what is a successful design all that we have designed all the techniques that we are used is successful when we called it a successful design there are the some things that must be associated with a successful design that it should be structurally stable the first and the second is that flood damage is minor which can be easily repairable that doesn't cost too much and the third is should accessible and usable after flood that building we are using hence we have to adopt flood these flood resistant building techniques if we are residing in a flood prone region of lower flood level coming to the result part that flood is mostly destructive and causes damage but have some benefits also such as it recharges groundwater maintains food ecosystem boosting food production for birds as well as in giving new habitat to aquatic life now there is a line but it is not a line only but a masses by zim that says water water everywhere but not a drop to drink that is of course until this lovely ship sinks so this is the end of the presentation thank you